This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. So for today's video, I am going to be working in my sketchbook. I have not worked in the sketchbook in a while. I feel like I haven't done like a nice spread in a while, you know, like with all sorts of different uh, mediums and everything. So, <clears throat> wow, what is happening to my voice right now? I'm trying to be kind of quiet because it's a little bit, it's a bit late. I mean, it's, it's Saturday, but still. <laughs> I, I know these balls are super thin. I started this sketchbook spread um, with the sketch on the top left. It's just a uh, an old building that's on the street that's like right next to the mechanic shop where we get our car service because we were waiting to get our car serviced. So I just kind of sat on the corner of the street and drew this while a guy asked me a couple times for money because he kept forgetting who I was. It was very sweet. Yeah, so that was fun and enjoyable. I definitely have a lot to learn still with drawing buildings, but I, I think I'm having fun with it for the most part and I'm learning to kind of just relax. I'm just messing around with the pen here. I'm adding some gouache to the background. I feel like when you do like a really simple, like, you know, kind of rough sketch, it helps kind of make it look a little nicer sometimes if you add something to the background, whether it's like, making it darker mostly because if if you're just doing like a light sketch then it helps to like make it stand out if you have something in the background to help like i don't know just make it stand out the girl on the bottom left she was actually a little concept sketch that i did for one of my patreon downloadable themajigs <laughs> it was for a goals chart which i will pop up on the screen here so you guys can see what the finished product looks like i uh, ended up just taking a photo of it and then i digitally finished it so that uh, it looked all nice and clean and then the girl on the other page there i I just kind of, I don't know, I felt like doodling a little bit, so I just whipped out the sketchbook and quickly drew her kind of from my brain. They're all from my brain, aside from the house. I used a reference for that one. Um, oh, and the flowers, obviously, you can see I'm using a reference for those. As usual, using Pinterest for reference, uh, this really was really, really handy for references. I love drawing these particular flowers, but I've, I've been really liking adding just like a little bit of a gouache painting to each spread. Like when I really want to make it look fancy, I find that adding a little bit of like a fancy gouache section <laughs> makes it like, I don't know, it takes it up to another level. Um, same thing would work with like watercolor, but I'm, I like adding gouache like florals. I feel like that looks really awesome and so yeah i've been doing that i've i've been doing it with like fruit and stuff too um it just gives me a reason to kind of practice something new but it's not like a huge commitment you know and uh even if it's like kind of rough it still makes the spread look so good but yeah i haven't really been doing that much sketchbook stuff lately and i'm i want to change that i've been trying really hard to figure out the best process for me, um, you know, what I want my day-to-day -day work to be and what works best for me. And it's always changing. I, I feel like I am going to start switching things up again because I do feel like uh, YouTube is taking up, it does take a lot of time. <laughs> if you have made a video before, then you'll know it does take a lot of effort and it takes even more effort when you are painting. You have to really, uh, it's, it's very unnatural feeling because you have like the lights above you, they get really hot. And not only that, but like you have to kind of contort yourself into a way that like works best for the camera and you have to be checking the camera all the time. So for me, it takes me out of the creative space that I kind of need to zero in on in order to stay like really focused because of my ADHD. It's been challenging. I, I don't know. I might end up changing things up in the future. I do want to 
be focusing more on my shop and I am really enjoying Patreon. So I think I might end up switching things up a bit in the future, but for now, I'm just gonna stick with this, see what happens. I really want to focus on doing more sketchbook stuff. I'm, I'm wanting to grow more. I really want to get better at landscapes and um, I'm actually going somewhere this Monday. My friend Sarah Wilson, uh, she's an amazing artist. She's set it up so that we can go and paint at a farm nearby. So that'll be interesting. I have no idea what I'm gonna paint, but I'm very excited to just wait and like, I don't know, look around and find something that I enjoy. I really want to invest in a sun tent, if that makes sense. Something that's like easy to just pop up anywhere and that way I could, I could paint anywhere because usually I have to look around for somewhere that I want to paint and then I have to make sure it's in the shade. So if I had a sun tent, I feel like it would be, it would be amazing. <laughs> it would be perfect because then I could just paint wherever the heck I want. I could go down to the beach. I always want to paint at the beach, but it's always so bright. And you know, whenever I go there, when it's behind the clouds, it's gloomy. So I only ever get to see it one time when I'm painting, I guess. But I want to do more of that, just take advantage of where where I live. But yeah, I love adding, like, it, I don't know if you can see there, I have, I don't know where I got this, like, little photo, of, like, the sweet beans from, or what are, what are these called? <laughs> Snap beans something or other? I think they're called different things in different places, but I, I can't remember where I got these from. I think I got mail from someone and they kind of just added these in there along with like uh, a cucumber one, which I'll be adding to the spread later. And I just kind of keep things like that around for later on when I want to put them in the, when I want to put them in the sketchbook. I have like a huge bin full of stickers. I try and avoid putting stickers in my sketchbook spreads because I like to be able to just scan the spreads later on if I want to actually like make a book out of them. So I can't really get away with that unfortunately, but if I wasn't selling them, I would definitely I would definitely be putting stickers in. So uh if I were if I were you guys and had that option, I would totally do it. I like to use like a lot of washi tape. Sometimes when I get like clothes and stuff or other things in the mail, they'll send like branding. And sometimes I'll just like snip random like snippets of... Sorry, I think somebody's like listening to me. <laughs> it's really creepy. But yeah, I, I snip like snippets of like different branding things and like it'll look super abstract like you won't even notice what it's really from if you look at it in the sketchbook but it'll help add like a pop of color like i'll just cut the paper so it's like you know like random shapes and stuff and i'll just add it in as like a little bit of something some some <laughs> yeah i've been enjoying that um so like if for example a lot of the time we'll just use whatever i have on hand so if you are out you know, on a trip somewhere. You can find brochures everywhere. Like when you go places, if you are coming off like a subway or whatever, um, usually there's like brochures around somewhere. Like in Japan, they had those, uh, the eki stamps, I think they're called. They're like train stamps and you find them at the shrines and stuff too. You can find all sorts of like little things. My friend Stacy uh, is like super clever with sketchbook stuff. Her sketchbooks are fantastic and she has just like the best ideas. When we were in Gujo Hachiman, we found a manhole cover or I don't know, I think they're called different things in different places, uh, like sewer, sewage drain cover thing in Gujo Hachiman. And it had like this beautiful artwork of like fish, like koi fish on it. We were admiring it and she just like took out her little cheap notebook that she had and ripped out a, p a piece of paper from it and then like put the paper down on the manhole and used the used like the side of her pencil to kind of just like scribble on it you know how like if you scribble across a piece of paper um you can like basically duplicate things like engravings and stuff um things that are like embossed 
yeah, she did that. It was really, really cool. I honestly wish I, that we'd done that with more manhole covers because Japan has some really nice ones. And, uh, yeah, I, I love that they actually get them, like, custom made for, like, the different prefectures and towns and stuff. It's really awesome. And I love that they all have, like, their own mascots for different areas, too. It would be really cool to, like, have different, uh, like, kind of animal mascots for... Uh, different towns and stuff in Canada. I think that'd be really cool. And I, I love that they do that. It, it's just so awesome. Like they're so clever with with a lot of uh, things like that, you know? They like really make things kind of like collectible and fun. Like it's like the gamified tourism, you know? I would love to travel all across Canada collecting Eki stamps if they existed in Canada. I love, I love that crap so much. Like, imagine, imagine if the country that you lived in had stamps so that, like, you could collect them in your sketchbook, like, different places that you could go. I just think it'd be so cool. And there are people that get really hardcore into it, too, like, in Japan. There are books that you can buy at different places. Like, in Kyoto, for example, there's, like, different shrines to visit. Um... Even in like smaller areas, they'll have like a whole bunch of different Eki stamps everywhere and you can, they'll, they'll just like give away little notebooks that have uh, different places and it'll explain a little bit what each place is and then there'll be like a little area for you to stamp. So you kind of like go around collecting all the stamps. And yeah, there's people that are like super hardcore about it that like go all across Japan and collect all of them. Yeah, if you, I'm pretty sure they're called Eki stamps, so if you go to Japan and you want to get some of them, um, you can usually just ask the, somebody at the train, um, you know, ask where is the Eki stamp or whatever, if you learn how to say that in Japanese, they will usually know where to point you. Sometimes they look at you like you're a total weirdo, but <laughs> most of the time they they point you to where to go. That was a tangent. But yeah, um, I have like a box that I just like shove all sorts of like interesting stuff in that I might want to use later for sketchbooks. And like I have probably too big of a washi collection for it as well so that I can like tape things in and um, have a couple of different kinds of like double-sided tape and stuff. And I will bring my, my one double-sided tape dispenser thingy with me in my sketchbook so that if I'm out somewhere and I see something that I want to put in my sketchbook, I have it with me and I can just pop it in there. Also, a lot of sketchbooks have like a flap in the back, like a little um, place that you can like store a couple pieces of paper. I will a lot of times put stuff in the back there that I want to use later and yeah, I'll, I'll just store it in there. So sometimes if I go out sketching and it's just like not quite going how I want it to, I will have stuff in the back of my notebook so that I can, or sketchbook so that I can like take it out and cut it up and find places that I want to put it in my sketchbook instead of drawing, you know? Because sometimes you intend to go out and draw something and it just it doesn't, it doesn't work. <laughs> I just wanted to interject real quickly. My plushie of my Oniberry guy is going to be coming out, I think, around July 16th. I'm still figuring out the exact date, but I'm pretty sure that's going to be it. If you guys want to make sure you can grab one, it'll be available for a bit less than a month. You'll have almost 30 days to grab one. Yeah, if you want to make sure you don't miss out, Make sure you follow along on my Instagram. You can turn on notifications and that way you won't miss it when I post that it's available. I will also be posting another video this month, so I will be letting you guys know then as well. But look at this guy. So soft. The leaves, so soft. Adorable. You can also turn him around so it just looks like a regular strawberry plushie if you feel like it. Yeah, I, I love him. He's so cute. I, I'm in love. I am going to get Lopi to come and tell you guys a story really quick, if that's okay, because yeah, something really weird happened. It was just like a really strange, random thing uh, that happened with his parents. <laughs> so I'm going to get him to come in here and tell the story. And um, if it seems a little disjointed, it's because I had actually recorded this once already. Um, this is like 
my re-recording of this video. So this is a clip from another voice recording, I guess. So my parents, uh, they watch America's Got Talent. Yeah. Yeah. And they recorded it, this ep specific episode. And a few days later, they're watching it. And they just finished watching a woman named Storm Large. Got the name right this time. Yeah. <laughs> Storm Large perform I've Got You Under My Skin, I think. And yeah. yeah, okay. And so then after her performance, my dad gets a, a text message shortly afterward. And it's from a number he doesn't recognize. And it says, was that Storm Large performing I've Got You Under My Skin? And my dad's like, what the hell? Yeah, because I mean, first <laughs> off, he doesn't like use his phone, so nobody would be really texting him except for us kids, and yeah. like, like nobody contacts him on that thing, and and so his initial thought is, oh, it's Rob, the guy that lives downstairs, uh, who's a friend of theirs, just kind of playing a prank on him, and so he confronts Rob, and Rob's looking at the phone, and he's just like, oh, I don't know, I don't recognize that number. And so Rob, being the nice friend, <laughs> decides to give it a call. And a woman picks up and Rob's like, who is this? <laughs> the lady's like, excuse me? And he's like, what are you doing calling my phone? And then the guy in the background is just like, who's this? And then the lady <laughs> hangs up. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then, and so now then my dad's like, yeah. So, so he calls me and he's explaining all this to me. And he's like, so I've, what I'm thinking uh, is that we have a camera on top of our of our TV, and uh, you know it was it was pointing toward our, toward us while we were watching it. So I unplugged that, and I'm just like, okay. And he's like, and then uh, I taped over the the camera on the computer, um, because somebody uh somebody was watching or, or listening, <laughs> and I'm just like, Dad, come on, like <laughs> that's a little far fetched. Who would be watching or listening to you guys? Every everyone listens now. <laughs> oh yeah. It oh is horrifying how how much just every everything listens and like i've actually looked into how to turn that off and like you have to basically make it so that you don't have like the recording on your instagram on or like tiktok or anything like that which is annoying because if you actually want to go to record anything with sound you have to turn it back on you have to like go into your settings and turn it back on i'm actually considering turning it all off again because it's getting it's getting really annoying. <laughs> annoying, just like mentioning something once, and then all of a sudden you're just inundated with ads for it. Yeah, like mentioning it just in talking with somebody. <laughs> I mean, like it doesn't have any like serious repercussions or whatever, but it's just I unnerving think it's a little devious. bit. So where was I? Oh yeah, so um, somebody was listening in and spying on my parents while they were watching <laughs> this thing. Um, and so my dad's talking to me. He's like, so what do you think? Well, like, what, what could it be? Are we, is somebody spying on us? And I'm like, well, either it's some insane coincidence where somebody just so happened to be watching the show at the same time as you, and then just so happened to accidentally text the wrong number. And then he's like, but listen, we had it recorded and we were watching it days later. And I was like, oh, that's a good point. Yeah. So like, it couldn't be somebody else that's like watching at the same time yeah. and they're like, yeah, yeah, it, it, make, <laughs> exactly. it would make it even more of a weird coincidence. Yeah, so, so yeah, so I'm like, okay, um, and then I'm like, well, Dad, how could they have gotten your number? Like, your number isn't connected to anything on the computer, which is where a hacker would have gotten into. So, and then he's like, but I get my phone bills on the computer, and I'm like, okay, so if somebody hacked into your guys' computer and have been spying on your screen, they may have installed like spyware to capture your key presses too, and they might be able to get into your bank and steal all your money. And my dad's starting to freak out. And I'm just, just like- Just giving your parents a <laughs> freaking heart attack. Yeah, well, sure. I'm thinking like worst case scenario, right? And, but, then, but then I'm like, but why would they text you and troll you like that? Like, I'm thinking, okay, at, at best, it's somebody, it's a hacker, but it's somebody that just goes around and, and trolls people. And that happens. Those, those people exist. And I'm like, but I can't come up there, Dad. Like, pandemic and everything, lockdown, like, we, we still can't travel. I don't feel comfortable coming up there to help you with all this stuff. And I don't know anybody over there 
who would even be able to go through your router and your modem and see who's connected to it when and try and trace IP addresses and all that kind of stuff and figure all that stuff out. So I'm finally like, Dad, how about you give me the number? I'll call him. He's like, oh, I don't know. They, they weren't really <laughs> happy last time when Rob called. And I'm like, just give me the number. Yeah, Rob was, he went in guns a-blazing oh, aggro <laughs> AF. Yeah, right. And so I want Rob on my, on my side. <laughs> <laughs> so he gives me the number. I get all the information I need. Like, okay, the song like when he was watching it, all this kind of stuff. Yeah. And I call it up, I call up the number, and this nice old lady answers, <laughs> and I'm like, hi, I'm sorry, this is gonna be really strange, um, but my dad got a strange text message recently, um, and were you by chance watching America's Got Talent or something like that, I asked her, and she's like, oh, that was your father. I'm like, wait, so, you did send him a text message and she's like oh my goodness okay so i was having a discussion with a friend of mine and she wanted to know who sang the song on america's got talent and so i looked it up and then i texted her the answer but i only realized later that it was the wrong number and i'm like really and she's like yeah and, I, and so i explained to her that my dad and mom had recorded that episode and were watching it just before she texted and she's like oh, no and I'm like yes oh my god so it's so creepy like what a weird insane coincidence yeah like wow just insane coincidence so then yeah I got to tell my dad and he was super relieved that he didn't have to tape up all of his because I was telling him too like you can't really block your microphones either like like <laughs> you can turn them off but yeah, and so, oh my gosh, my dad was so stressed out and freaking out about being hacked and spied on and people were watching him through the webcams. Oh my god, I could just see your dad, like, freaking out. <laughs> well, he's already, like, super technologically illiterate and so just everything's scary to him when it comes to that. You, yeah. don't, even, you don't even need to be te technologically illiterate. Well, actually, like, think point, about yeah. my biological father. He is, like paranoid he's a programmer and like he's crazy super paranoid, yeah. yeah he thinks that disney is like stolen all of his ideas he doesn't use google like it's yeah it's it's a lot this would be <laughs> a great time to talk about our sponsor squarespace and now a message from our sponsor squarespace so i've been using a squarespace site for the past four years so it's safe to say that i am a fan of the platform it's amazing for displaying artwork because they have lots of templates for portfolios. I actually made three separate portfolios on mine, and you can actually password protect certain portfolios, which is awesome for if you're a freelancer and need to share images with clients. You can also have a secret password protected shop for things like Patreon, which I'm currently testing out myself for my Patreon. Uh, I think that's a really cool option. All the templates have nice and clean designs, so it's pretty foolproof. When customizing, you can click anywhere on the page and drop in a variety of bits and bobs. I really like to take advantage of the buttons. <laughs> I don't know why I really like buttons, so I have them kind of everywhere. <laughs> Another thing that has been really super handy for me with my site is the contact form. It just looks professional and it's usually how people contact me for any side jobs or questions. Overall, I've been really happy the past four years with this site. I'm the kind of person that kind of tests different things out, so I'm glad I finally found something that kind of sticks for me. If you're looking to make your own website, you can head to Squarespace for a free trial. And then when you're ready to launch, you can go to squarespace.com forward slash Audre Claire to save 10% on your first website or domain. And I'd like to say a big thank you to Squarespace for your services and for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to the video, shall we? Thank you, Lopi, for that lovely story. So you know how I was mentioning that I save things in a box to put in my sketchbook later on? I also save sketches that I do previously, like if I'm out somewhere, I'll draw on like a napkin or on a random other piece of paper or I'll draw on a totally other sketchbook and sometimes I'll cut them out and I'll put them in the box too for later because obviously I, if I can help it, I would like to fill my sketchbook up with my drawings, not just like, you know, a lot of random stuff. So I keep those and uh, the one that I put in here of the bunny, I had that one for a really long time actually, just kind of sitting around. 
I liked it better as a sketch. Um, I don't think I made the painting as good as I would like to have liked it to have been, but uh, I might fuss with it um, again later. And like the sketches that I added as well with the girls like coming out of the flower pot, that one I had for years, <laughs> I think. <laughs> I like keeping a lot of that kind of random stuff and also I've been reading a bunch. I, I've i been reading um, the Golden Compass series. I think, I think it's called His Dark Materials is like the actual name of the series and it's really interesting. Um, I never really got into it because I thought it was kind of like a religious book and I'm like not a religious person but then I learned that like it, that it wasn't religious. Um, I mean, it kind of is, but it's more so like anti-religion, but not, I don't know. It's, it's weird. Anyways, I read it. I'm reading it. It's really good. I, I would love to know what my daemon is. If you guys have like watched the movie or read the book, you'll know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like my daemon would be like some sort of water bird thing like a bird that likes the water but i'm not sure i am definitely a bird person so i feel like it would be some kind of bird but yeah uh i've been really liking painting these like little patterns on things so oh my god oh i was gonna say <laughs> so i've been reading a lot lately and i come across words a lot of the time that i uh don't understand so i've been trying to make an effort to actually remember them so i wrote down one of them um, in my sketchbook here and it actually has really helped me to remember the word by writing it down. So I want to keep doing that. I want to keep writing down words and writing down the definitions so that I can kind of work on my vocabulary because this one is really stuck for me. Yeah, I, I, I want to keep doing that and quotes too. I always love putting quotes in but I usually bookmark them in my in my Kobo reader and then they're gone. Like I don't know where to find them again. I don't think my Kobo reader has that uh, science. <laughs> I don't know if it actually like properly saves it so that I can like go back and look at it, but I wish it could because I, I read at night like before bed to kind of like calm my brain down. It has been, I think, the best tactic that I have discovered for my ADHD for like winding down at night. Otherwise, I just I think of literally everything that is humanly possible. I will go throughout my entire life and think of every single little thing and uh, it's just not good. And if I'm not going backwards in time, I'm going forwards in time and worrying about everything in the future. So reading has been wonderful and I am a very slow reader. I'm very not good at it. I did not do good in school whatsoever. So the fact that I'm reading now, um, I'm really proud about. I started with like children's books or like, uh, you know, books for like nine, 10, 12 year olds. And I kind of just like worked up from there. And yeah, I mostly have been reading young adult now, but I, I have gone backwards and now I'm, now I'm uh, reading the golden compass and yeah, it's a very interesting series. It was kind of hard for me to get into because they just like right out the bat like threw down a whole bunch of names and stuff and I was like why are you throwing all these weird names and words that I don't understand at me like right from the beginning why would you do that like that's such a turn off but uh I stuck with it and yeah it's it's interesting it's very different from anything I've ever read before which I I think I like oh that was Nimbom <laughs> Oh, he just yawned. He wants food. It's not love. It's it's only food that he wants. <laughs> um, but yeah, I should go and feed him because he's not gonna stop until until I feed him. Hi, what do you want? You can't sit here. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's uh, it's been a bit odd, you know, but. It's, it's been nice talking with you guys and just kind of walking through my sketchbook process, I guess. I, I've been really enjoying it. I can't wait to be able to put together another book 
that's just like filled with my sketchbook spreads because I, I really enjoy doing that. So I want to work towards that. But yeah, thanks for watching everyone and uh, take care. Bye. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs>